Ow. Yeah. 64! Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, episode 17. Yeah. We're going to crack one. We're going to smoke one. We're going to pull back the motherfuckers. Bring out the clucking and the chucking when we go. Fucking in my hoe, and you know that we flow real slow. The dynamite get oh, look at my hair sticking out of me hat. <clears throat> One second there, folks. I'm not plugged in. What is this? I'm not plugged in. Come on, boy! Ah, oh. That's more like it. That's... My Sharoma! I'm back! I'm back in the original set. Back to the criminal set! But they can't catch me yet! Exhibit. Shout out to Exhibit. Oh, I'm super tired. Trying to get back into a regular sleep schedule after being away. Working, you know, I was in a hotel the last two episodes. Now I'm back in the original criminal set. You heard, mate. <laughs> Just kidding. But I'm seriously back. I came back and a few CDs fell off the, the wall behind me and I stuck them back up. They seem to be fine now. And speaking of uh, CDs, All Eyes on Me coming out tomorrow for me. But it's, uh, who knows, whenever I upload this. Because they're not live anymore, remember? Someday they'll be live again when I get things straight. But right now they're not live. Right now, they're they're just me uploading. Man, am I tired. I am so tired. There's a... This weekend, there's a thing in my shitty town. Don't want to say what it's called. Because it'll give away my shitty town. (laughs) Which is not too much of a bad thing. But I don't know. I don't want to give too much information away. Even though it's probably already out there. It is already out there. Well, I'll just explain what it is. It's a monster truck. Um, redneck. It's a fucking uh, mud racing. Uh, there's even lawnmower races. Right on lawnmower races. Stuff like that. It's kind of cool. It's kind of not cool. And there's usually a fair every year, but this year apparently it's not showing up. Because it's Canada's 150th birthday, and the people who normally come here every year had other obligations. So there's no fair this year! Ah! I didn't really do anything on it anyway. I did like the, the, the food, even though it's very unhealthy. Carnival food. Or fair? What's the difference between a carnival and a fair? I couldn't tell you. I can't tell you. Oh, I am so fucking tired. You know how you get just so tired? I feel like I'm jet lagged. Even though I wasn't that far away from where I live. I'm so tired it feels like I have no thoughts coming into my head. I'm barely ticking (laughs) to talk. My brain is just on the cusp of just saying, you're going to fall asleep. And we've got a few topics to talk about. And I haven't even got into the first one. Actually, I got into the second one already. I talked about all eyes on me already. Tupac! Look at my face. It's burnt. I got the raccoon eyes. 
because I was wearing sunglasses out in the sun. Out in the sun, having some fun. I am a sunbather. <clears throat> I'm thinking about going online tonight and buying a new backdrop. Because I really didn't like this one from the beginning. That's why. Y'all hear that? Sounds like a lawnmower. They're getting ready. But anyway, as I was saying, I didn't like this backdrop from the get-go. It was the best out of the small options that I had. So I'm going to look for a better selection. Ah! My mouth is dry and I'm tired as hell. And that lawnmower... Is driving me bonkers. I have a new gorilla pod for my camera, but I can't show you because my camera is attached to the pod, uh, and I don't feel like disconnecting and turning it around to show you. Because it took me a while to position this gorilla pod to where it's at right now, and it's still not that perfect. But it was the best I could do to get all the CDs in frame. So I don't know what uh, backdrop I'm going to find, but it's going to be way better than this. This one's got to go. <clears throat> Maybe I'll find, uh, I'll probably buy two or three. And then when the Christmas season comes around, maybe I'll have a Christmas themed one. Who knows? Don't ask me. I haven't got that far yet. We're only at number 17. Okay, I think it's time to jump into this card. Uh, men's bathroom. <clears throat> There's so many loud noises going on. There's a burp coming up. I gotta let this burp out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's how I burp now. So if you're wondering, that's how I burp. <laughs> uh, why did I, what was I going to talk about? Men's bathrooms. They're very different from fem females' bathrooms. And I don't, don't, I don't even want to get into these trans, transgender bathrooms, this whole... I don't know what's going on in Canada. I live in Canada. <clears throat> I was born in Canada. Raised in Canada. I've always lived in Canada. Uh, and Justin Trudeau, the pr prime minister, decided he's going to make it uh, make transgender bathrooms, change the national anthem to uh, to uh, I don't know something about gender, and <laughs> and then it's, he also made it a law that anyone can identify themselves as whatever gender they want. And the employers and people around them have to do whatever they say. So if I were like, I want to be a female. Then you're going to call me a female. Gizmo. What's crack a lack and home squizzit? Gizmo. Gizmo just showed up. So yeah, that's, that's what's going on. Anyway, I said I wasn't going to talk about them and I started talking about them. I wanted to talk about just men's bathrooms in general. Uh, how they're different in the fact that they are just urinals. I don't know why I wanted to talk about this. But there's rules. I was just thinking about the rules. The unspoken rules in a men's bathroom. If you're peeing in a urinal, you have to look at the wall. You don't look at your dick. If you look at your dick, you're a fucking loser. And people are like, what is wrong with this pussy? He's looking at his penis. You have to look at the wall. People really judge, guys will judge you if you're looking at your dick while you're pissing. I just thought that was strange. We all know that, but we never talk about it. You just stare at the wall. And you never take a peek at the person next to you. If you do, things get extremely awkward. Unless it's two gay guys. 
Even then, I don't even know if that would be awkward or not. Because uh, I'm not gay. So, I've, you know, I never had that experience. Um, and shitting. Well, I don't know. There's no really rule for shitting. There's a lot of uh, graffiti and stuff all over the wall. All over the stall wall. I started an X and O game a few times on a few walls in a stall. Uh, went back to check up on the progress, and usually nobody ever contributes. Because how often when you go take a shit in a stall do you have a pen on you? Not very often. So I've started to take a Sharpie with me everywhere I go, because you never know. There's going to be a time... And you're going to need to whip that Sharpie out. You hear that rumble? You're going to need to whip that Sharpie out. And you're going to need to contribute to some X and O's on the stall bathroom. Or maybe you need to... Someone asks a question like, uh, What's the meaning of life? Or, or, or who do I call to get good coke kokany? You know what I'm saying? Coke, you need a beer? The beer? I don't know. It was just a thought I had about men's bathrooms. If you're a female, go to a men's bathroom. Try it. You can do it in Canada if you identify as a man. You can hop right into a men's bathroom and piss in the urinal. If you live in Canada... Actually, I don't really care. I do not give a flying fuck. Oh, I got a text message, but I'm not going to look at it. Okay, so we got Tupac down. We got men's bathroom down. Ooh. You know what I'm seeing a lot of lately? Protests. It seems like it's happening more often than not. It used to only be with union people. They would just protest unbelievably amount of time, a lot of times. But now it's just anyone who disagrees with something. They all gather up. We put signs on the street. Shout stuff. And is it because they're lazy? They don't want to accept the change. I don't know. What could it be? I was thinking they would be. It's. It has some form. It was some form of laziness. Um. They just want to keep things the way they are. I can't. I don't even know what I was trying to say, but. <laughs> Bill N- or not Bill Nye. Bill Gates said. He loves to hire lazy people because they always find the easiest way to do things. So is that what's happening with these protests? They just, they want the easy way out. So they just protest and protest till they get the easiest possible solution. So they don't have to put in as much work. We got all these robots and stuff that are taking over jobs. And we're realizing, hey, we don't have to do this labor intensive shit anymore. These robots are taking over. And we just let the robots take it over. And we're accepting it as generations get older and older. And, you know, the previous generations are hating it. And they're like, oh, people are getting lazy. And that's kind of what I was getting at. People are becoming lazy because they know a machine can do their job. That they would normally have to do. And the older generations had to do it. And they suffered through it. And they, uh, you know, they learned a lot of of good, they learned a lot of things out of it. And built some character and and, uh, gained some skills and all this crap. And learned how to deal with stress. So when they see these new generations refusing to do what they had to go through. It really bothers them. The older generation gets bothered by it. Um, 
so they try to keep it a certain way. Um, but then you have people who just say, are fed up with it, the young people, and they protest to say, hey, I'm not Stand, I'm not standing for your stupid old bullshit ways. We gotta do it this way. Which is kind of the opposite of what I was saying in the beginning. About how they were scared of change. Protesters want the change. Hmm. Well, I guess they could be protesting in different ways. Because if you look at a union, if their prices get cut or whatever which definitely would never happen especially in a union but let's say it did then that, that would be a protest to keep things the old way whereas before or in the situation of uh, um new generations not accepting old generation ways that would be a form of uh, protesters wanting change so by, so with like I talked about in a previous podcast um, Mike Rowe was saying there needs uh, the younger generations need to do more labor intensive stuff and I was touched on it, and I said, uh, you know, we have to pursue happiness. And Mike Rowe didn't want happiness. He said, stop pursuing happiness. Just accept whatever job you can get, because you can quit at any time. But, I mean, you know, I went into it. You can watch the podcast if you want to hear about it. I don't want to talk about it again. So... What my what I'm trying to get at is the the robot thing, you know. Very soon, robots are gonna take over every labor intensive job. They're already taking over fast food joints where we don't and uh, well, any place that ha- has a cashier. Because now, if you go to McDonald's, you can order your food from a machine, pay for it from that machine, and you sit down. And all the person behind the counter does is make the food and give it to you. And and it wouldn't be that hard for a machine to just make all that food and a machine to deliver it to you. They already have that in Japan. It comes out on a conveyor belt right to your table. So... And, you know, Ray Kurzweil, with his singularity idea, eventually, um, uh, what was I going to (laughs) say? Oh, yeah, technology builds upon itself, uh, like, I can't remember what the exact numbers were, but faster and faster every year, because you have the new technology to build newer technology so it progresses faster and faster and faster we you know we started off with the wheel and then you know slowly slowly progressed and progressed and we're building all this momentum the fast the more shit we build and it keeps spinning and spinning and that's you know that's the idea of the singularity where it's going to, you know, get to this point where we can't spin any faster. Where we've successfully gone as far as we can get in terms of uh, creating technology. We will be able to do everything and anything. Go to every dimension. See all, create all. And then we create another universe, and then they get, they build their way up to the singularity after billions and billions of years. And it just keeps happening and happening and happening.
What if that? What if that's what's happening? Maybe. I don't know. I just pulled that out of my butthole. I'm not, you know, saying I believe it. I'm just saying, good, giving out ideas. And this all came from protests. Oh, I talked about this fourth topic too on on the card, which is uh, I'm done working away, as you can already tell, because I already talked about it. So we're on to the next. So we've only got three things left to talk about. Hey, uh, Kasim G. He is, uh, he's doing good. His podcasts, you know, now, now we see that they are scripted. He just, you know, you can tell. And you can tell, uh, Peter Gilroy and the Bath Boys are heavily involved because it's, uh, it's, it's got their touch to it. You can tell that they are involved and, and not only by the way it's written and, uh, portrayed, but they're all actors on the show. You see them and every episode's a new bath boy. From Kushtopia. It's it's awesome. It's like a TV show. You know, he referred to it as a podcast, but in the front, which it is still a po- it's podcast fused with like show TV show format. It's it's a really cool idea. I like it a lot, and I highly recommend it. Uh, and while I was watching that today, I, s- I saw like a related video somehow. This guy biking through Skid Row. Which, if you don't know what Skid Row is, there's a place in Los Angeles. It's a street. One sec. Hello? Those friggin' call centers. They call and you say hello and they hang up so that they can figure out what time you answer the phone. It's Bologna. So Skid Rose is an uh, area in Los Angeles where a bunch of homeless crack addicts live. <laughs> and it's just like shit ton of tents all over the place. There's always fights and drugs and blood, AIDS. It's a place you don't want to be. And this guy just bikes through there all the time. And he's doing tricks. Spinning his handlebars on his BMX. Uh, I can't remember his name. I think it was John Hick or something. But I don't know. That was kind of cool. Because I never got to see I heard about Skid Row. But you got to see it up close and personal. And he had a, his videos were exactly like Casey Neistat's, which everybody is copying him now. Even fucking uh, Jesse from Prank vs. Prank, his vlogs are exactly like Casey's. I was like, why are you guys doing this? I don't know, I guess I shouldn't get mad at it, but Casey kind of created this format for outdoor vlogging, if you're... If you're uh, athletic in a way. And now everybody does it like that. And also, I'm wearing a Nirvana shirt, as you can see. Nirvana's original name before they picked Nirvana was Skid Row. For a little while. And there is actually another band. They're like a heavy metal band. And they're they're called Skid Row as well. I am so... I'm not, I'm not, uh, on beat today because I am tired as fuck. I said it 300 times already, and I'm going to say it another 300 more. I am tired, and my lips are dry. And there's fucking lawnmowers outside me door. Oh, and the final thing I want to talk about is the spiders. Remember those spiders on, uh, on my door? I mean, <laughs> oh, on my door, outside my window on the satellite dish. They, uh, they're all gone. Don't know where they went. There was a lot of rain, so they probably got washed away. Spiderweb is still there, the biggest one. The biggest spiderweb still there. 
but it's deteriorating quite a bit. So they might come back, but they probably won't. This is two weeks, two and a half weeks ago the last time I saw them, because that's how long I've been away. And that was the final fucking topic. If you're Jewish, if you're Mexican, if you're black or white, I've got something to tell you. Please don't you put it in your mouth. Don't just stuff it in your face because it's not so good to eat and it's not your favorite place. Don't put it in your mouth. Yeah.